Oz, hi guys, how are you? Uh, Shia and Matt here again today, as usual, for 12 o'clock. Got a very special guest here today, Sensei Tony, Tony Hester. Oz. Uh, as you can see, we've also making sure we've got our social distancing measures in place. So uh, we'll see this stick being poked around a little bit from time to time. So just a couple of top topics that we're both going to be uh, discussing today. Um, I suppose I'll open the floor with, firstly, um, what really um, upsets me at times is when you go to a cafe, you see that Sensei is enjoying his coffee here. Um, when you go to a cafe and you ask for lactose-free milk and then you don't test it until you get back and, and you realise that they've put um, uh, 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 some, something else in it, a soya milk or something like that. If it doesn't come from a cow, it's not milk. Isn't that right? Correct. Correct. Oof. All right, so anyway, one of the things I wanted to, to address today was parental involvement in classes. Now, I know that um, a lot of parents are struggling to help their kids with their classes at home, but of course, in this climate, whether it's school, whether it's karate or BJJ, kickboxing, whatever it is that we're doing, the online learning content is extremely important and parents have to get involved. Um, and if you're one of those parents that sort of sits back and goes, oh, you know what, I couldn't be bothered, um, it's all too much. Look, I get it, I really do. Um, but I'll tell you a story, um, and, and, and I promise it'll be a short one. I do tend to go on from time, time to time. I was no, really? <laughs> I was expecting... No, I find the, that incredibly hard to believe. I was expecting a social distancing stick to come <laughs> into play then. But, it, but, it, but anyway... Uh, yesterday, my daughter Ruby, who has gone from primary school to now to high school, uh, uh, came out to me with her, her maths homework in a bit of a panic, saying that you know uh, she's got X amount of work to do to be able to submit, and they've sort of sprung it on her that she's got to do all this and all this and all this. Uh, while she's been busy working very, very hard at her home disco, she probably hasn't been doing the homework requirements that she's meant to be doing, so of course she needed... Um, some, some help and if anyone um, who knows me knows that um, as soon as we start to mention maths my brain starts melting um, and I'm sure you'd be the same no, too Sensei I was away the day we did maths was you? So, oh, I suppose, but he only has to count to, to how many rounds do you carry in, in a clip <laughs> so now what she did was she came to me with her homework and she said, look, Dad, um, I can't do it. I need some help. And I just got, oh, no, maths, I hate it. And my brain literally started melting. I was trying to find every excuse I could possibly find not to um, get involved with it. I just, just didn't want to do it. I, I hate maths. Um, find it just brain-numbing. Anyway... So I said, okay, no worries at all, sat down, got my reading glasses, my brain was already hurting, sat down, thought, okay, let's, let's start this. Three hours later, uh, I was so heavily involved with this, and we'd gotten through so much work, and I was so surprised at just how well I was able to adapt to it. And I'd actually learned something. Um, we both worked together, we were able to f figure this out, and we were both able to uh, get through all the work that she needed to do. And we learned something. I learned something and she, she learned something. And then we're planning to do the same thing again today. So today I've got more maths to look for, forward to pretty much as soon as I get home after this live stream. And to be honest, I'm actually excited by it. Um, it, just, it, it was more than just giving her help. It was a bit of a bonding experience as well. And, um, you know, and that's what I was excited about. Um, I know Sensei Tony, he's got um, a teenage son at home. What are you finding at the moment difficult um, with teenagers in the house? Yeah, my son's 18 and prior to this uh, nasty situation that we find ourselves in at the moment, you would only ever see him at feeding time. He was like a, a cow wandering in and then he'd disappear again into his... Uh, his own environment and all the things he liked doing. But now that we are not going out as much and he's spending more time in the house and with us, we're, we're finding uh, through necessity that we have to, to find something else to do. Um, and yesterday, we simply sat down with the family, played a game of Monopoly. Now, I haven't played Monopoly since I don't know when. 
And uh, as you know, Monopoly goes for a long time. But it was really, really enjoyable. Um, I saw a side of him, a competitive side of him that I didn't really know before. And um, it was interesting. We just, we both uh, learnt more of each other because uh, I'm not one that likes to lose. And, <laughs> and uh, it, it was really quite interesting. My wife was the adjudicator for the, uh, I'm taking, taking your big properties and that sort of thing. So we'd done something together that I haven't done in ages and it just, it was seriously enjoyable, but you had to force yourself, I had to force myself to do it. When the, the idea of Monopoly came up, I thought, really? Um, and then I realised just how much I enjoyed the afternoon. It went on for quite a number of hours. So in times like this, uh, I've learned also that you do have to be as motivated as you were prior to this, this nasty virus because in your small environment, you have to work harder to find things to do to enjoy yourself. Um, and later on this afternoon, oh, I don't know what we'll play, but we'll get out another board game, a different board game, I'm guessing, because I found that I really enjoyed it yesterday, as did my son. So your son's not at school at the moment? No, he's finished school. So you don't have to do maths? <laughs> I don't have to do maths, which is a really good thing. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, my wife is... Uh, prior to her retirement was a school teacher, so I could uh, always default to a higher authority when the maths questions you came You really out. lucked out, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, very, very, very fortunate. Very typical, very <laughs> typical. Excuse me. <laughs> sorry, mate, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right, so um, I think, you know, the, you know, some of the major adjustments that, that, that people tend to be facing is, of course, spending more time with their kids um, discovering who they really are, like, I'm, I'm, like as Sensei was saying, I'm now starting to see a different side to my daughter that um, I didn't quite know the complexities and the depths of, and it's really, really exciting. I, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying that, and I think what I'm taking out of that is the fact that uh, um, she is able to express herself, um, and I think it's really important, especially for the for, for the teenage years. And I know your son's the same. How, how old is your son now? Eighteen. Eighteen. So. Uh, still just a baby in the grand scheme of things. Um, no offence to all 18-year-olds out there, um, but in your parents' eyes, you are still babies. Um, so for us as parents, it's one of those things that you know, we, we have to make the adjustments for our kids. And if we don't do this, if we don't make those adjustments for our kids, they're the ones that are going to suffer. Yeah. In the long run, yeah, definitely. In the, yeah. So... We've all got to step up. We've all got to do a bit. We've all got to make sure that um, uh, we make some something of it. So rather than it being a chore, try to find the positive. And as I've always said, is that there's tragedy or opportunity. And in this tragedy, we've got to find all the opportunities that we can. We've got to exploit them. And we've got to make sure that we, uh, we use those um, as best we can to make sure that our kids don't just survive this and that, and that we don't just survive this but we actually thrive okay um in in my line of work over the years um I've, I've picked up many many skills and those skills have sort of put me into the position that i am right now and because of those skills i can offer that to my daughter and it was funny because all the maths that she was um trying to show me was stuff that i actually know and it was stuff that I, that, that I used like, while, while, while I've been building this place. You know, just all the mathematical uh, square meterage and everything else that I've, I've, that, I've, that I've used to calculate building products and materials and paints and all, all kinds of things was exactly what it was that she needed the help with. So I was actually, I was surprised, more than qualified to help. And I think we all need to remember that, especially when it comes to martial arts training, you are qualified to help your kids, yeah? Oh, Definitely. So you can do things for your kids. You're qualified to be a punching bag, okay? You, as parents, uh, our job is to allow our children to cut their teeth on us anyway, so they might as well be kicking us in the leg and punch us in the guts anyway. But by helping your kids, you can break down um, those lessons with them. Go through it step by step. I guarantee you're going to learn some, some, something as well. And then, of course, I, I think it's going to spawn a whole new generation of martial artists and parents. Yeah, which can only be a good thing. Can only be a good thing. Mm. 
I, 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 for, for those of you who are old enough to remember the original Pink Panther movies with Peter Sellers, there's, uh, there was a character in those movies who was, was uh, the Pink Panther's uh, sidekick, for want of a better term. His name was Cato, and he used to hide throughout the house. And as the Peter Sellers would move around the house, Cato would jump out at him and wrestle him and fight him and box him. And he'd hide in things like the fridge and in wardrobes and the like. And I found now that my, my son's getting great enjoyment of just tackling me <coughs> as I walk down the corridor. I can't see him coming or I don't know where he is. And as much as I, uh, I find it a bit of a shock, he thinks it's hilarious. But we're getting through this together and that's what we all have to do. And you have to find ways to just simply um, find things to do and you'd be surprised at how much there is to do around the home if you look at it in a different light. <laughs> I can just imagine your son, or you, the surprise on your face. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know my son, he's, he's closer to six foot three, weighs about 100 kilo, and uh, when he jumps at me, it's... It's not pretty. Yeah, no, considering that he's, he's been studying bodybuilding now for the last couple of years as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, quite successfully too, I might add. Yeah. So he does have a fair and fair amount of strength, and I think he's taken advantage of the fact that his old man, although he's becoming more cunning, he's, get, he's getting a lot older. He's getting a lot older, And the yeah. funny thing is, the skill set that you've got, Sansei, is quite a devastating one, especially in close quarters combat. <laughs> but you can't do that to your own <laughs> yeah, son, you so you've got to suffer. Yeah, so I, I suffer. <laughs> but at least he's enjoying himself. It's the same thing with me. Like uh, um, the amount of times that I'm standing in the kitchen, and all of a sudden, whoosh! There's a kick come flying towards my face, and I've got to turn around to Ruby and say, "Ruby, you can't kick me in the face in the kitchen, please." <laughs> and she's like, "But you're a shehan. You're supposed to seal this stuff." And I'm like, "I don't have my gear on. Don't kick me in the face." <laughs> And then I'll be uh, in the in the in the lounge room. Like actually, uh, Fleur will be, be in the lounge room. While watching television, Ruby sneaks up behind her, um, slithers in behind the couch, and bam, surprises her with a rear naked choke. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the two of them are on the floor and wrestling. It usually ends up in tears, either one, one way or the other, or me screaming at the two of them to stop. But um, we can make something out of this. Exactly. And make every post a winner. That's it. And when y y your kids are expressing themselves through martial arts, invite it. Let, let them because it's going to help you in the future. It's going to harden you up, all of you pussy parents out there. It's going to harden you up a little bit. So, and you have, yeah. to, remain, you have to remain the pillar of, of, of hope for the kids, especially the younger kids. If you're down or worried about things, they'll feed off your emotions and they will end up the same way. And some, Even if it hurts, smile, be motivated, Look for the bright side of things because uh, that will get them through. And we will get out of this. We will come to the end of this. And you want your kids to be in the best uh, condition physically and emotionally as you can. So however hard it is, smile and wave. All right. Well, I think that um, is uh, certainly enough said for today. I'd like to thank my very special guest, uh, my mentor, my best friend, and my partner in crime now for over 20, 20 years, Sensei Tony Hester. Big round of applause for Sensei Tony. Thank you very, very yes. much. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you all. Now, today's classes, uh, the timetable as normal. So I've got Rog over here who's helping out. So 4.30, what, what day is today? It's Wednesday. Wednesday. So Wednesday, 4.30, we've got uh, kids kickboxing. Is that right? No, we've got, we've got Kinder Ninjas at 4.30 today. We have 5.30, we have... Kids kickboxing, and then 6.30 we have teens and adults karate. Now, I'm going to be teaching the teens and adults karate tonight. Now, uh, I, I, I can't do a lot of te teaching in the physical sense as far as de demonstration. I've got a brand new uh, hip, which is six, six weeks old, still, still in the recovery stage. But I've got a few guys that um, are going to be come, coming in tonight to help me out. We're going to be breaking down, uh, firstly, a few of the uh, Yakuaza techniques that Sifu um, uh, uh, shone some light on in his live feed the other day. And then we're going to get uh, a, car, a couple of boys to do some sparring. We can watch some world-class level sparring. And then we're going to stop it and we're going to break it down step by step and just show you the intricacies of the basics. The intricacies of the basics. 
Um, and as we know, the foundation of all martial arts is in the basics, it's nothing fancy, and just show you how simple and easy it really is for the junior generation to become the senior elite world champions, simply by listening to your teachers and simply by following the basics. So I look forward to seeing you all then. So Sensei, us, us. thanks very much. Thanks, guys.